What's holding you back from creating your artwork? There are a lot of things in place that are specifically designed to pull us away from being productive. I want to talk about some things that we can do to sort of flip the script and make those things work for us and not against us. <laughs> Greetings people of the internet, I'm Scott with CircWorks Art Labs. Welcome mad creators to the underground laboratory where we create robots, aliens, zombies, and other imminent threats to humanity. Or at least we try to create those things, but sometimes there's these sort of outside interference that comes in and tries to draw us away from doing the things we want to do, to create the things we want to create. It's really difficult, and sometimes those things are designed for, for that purpose. Uh, so what do we do about that? One thing I hear from a lot of creators is how they don't have time to create artwork. They're just too busy. They just can't find the time here or there to, to work on their own projects. But then what happens is that you hear them talk about this TV series that they watched, or you see all these posts on social media, or they're talking about this high score that they hit on this video game. So that leads me to believe, well, if you had time to do all this other stuff, why don't you have time to, to work on your artwork? And maybe those things are more important to you. Uh, and if that's the case, that's fine, but I think you just have to admit it. But in some cases, Cases, you really do want to be creating your artwork but there's all these other distractions and these distractions whether it's social media TV video games they just relentlessly keep calling us and it's hard to turn away um, and the thing is they are designed to do that I used to work in the video game industry specifically like social games or casual games which are pretty much the worst offender of this these kind of putting in these kind of tactics to get you addicted to keep you playing to pull you away from things that you know may be more important to you but they just don't have they just don't have that incentive that is built into some of these games and social media and all this stuff so what do we do about that well instead of trying to fight this so hard why don't we use some of these techniques and some of these these systems that are designed to bring us in and get us hooked what if we took some of those and applied them to our artwork kind of gamified the creative work that we do so today I want to talk about five ways we can gamify our productivity. While we do that, we're going to do some artwork, so let's get to it. Okay, so I've got five tips here for you that are going to help gamify your productivity. But these tips aren't, it's not like, oh, I could do this one or I could do that one. These are going to be even more powerful if you start using all five of these tips together. So just keep that in mind because you can combine them and just like totally power up with this whole thing. So the first tip is leveling up. And the idea of this is to kind of create, you've seen this in video games where you sort of got the status bar. Uh, this is how far along you are until you get to your next goal. So, you know, you could start at level one and just create like a little status bar and each task that you complete, you check that off. You also see, if you've seen any creative resume, sometimes you'll see this where it'll say, it'll list software that people are using. And it'll be like uh, Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop, and it'll say like novice on one end and pro on the other, and it'll kind of show where they feel they are. Which, I mean, they I think they kind of determine that because they're really not an actual metric. But again, this is all for us to kind of decide and, and to kind of compare ourselves to uh, and everything. So we are the ones that kind of, kind of set that up. But you can create this status bar so whatever it is it could be a task it could be you know I want to do a page in my sketchbook and you could do that every single day until you hit you know whatever you know seven days and then that's level one and or that's level two and then you can go on from there it can be anything it can be uh, I want to learn clip studio pro and you can break up each each section of that say or you know uh, the pen tool, which is kind of a complicated thing to learn in Illustrator, but if you want to try to learn that, just say, this. I'm going to work on this amount of time every day uh, using the pen tool until I get to this, and then once I get that, then you've kind of leveled up to the next thing. Or you could set it up with like a point system where you get so many points for each thing you do, and then you, at the you know you can at the end of like a week or whatever you have a high score, and then uh, next week you just can try to uh, beat that high score. 
And whether you do that every week or every day, that's important because that's one way that game companies can kind of hook us in, and that is to create uh, sort of these time-based challenges. So number two is beat the clock. Uh, there's a lot of good examples of these time-based challenges. Uh, one is a challenge that I think Jake Parker created. That I think if you go to his website, there's something called the eight minute, minute drawing challenge. And basically I think how it works is you've got eight minutes and then it's kind of broken down into six different uh, time-based uh, challenges. The first one is two minutes and you just draw an object. It could be uh, like a bear or a car or, or whatever. Um, um, and you draw that for two minutes and then the next time you go for one minute and then it goes down to 30 seconds and then I think it goes to 15 seconds and finally five seconds and what happens is that kind of trains you to kind of streamline your process so if you're somebody who wants to do cartoon or animation where you don't want a lot of extraneous details it's really good for that but that's a good time-based challenge and there are so many of these um, obviously uh, you know there's the 100 days of making comics where you spend 30 minutes a day every day for 100 days straight working on your own comic book project that is an excellent time-based challenge and there's all kinds of you know monthly challenges there's uh, Inktober there's March of Robots Mermaid I uh, heard of a new one called Kaiju where you draw Kaiju every every day of June so these are all really good challenges but you know you don't have to necessarily follow something that somebody else created you can develop your own time-based challenge for instance maybe you want to work on drawing hands we can get your sketchbook out set a, a timer for 30 minutes and see how many hands you can draw in those 30 minutes and then you know when you do it again say like the next day uh, try the whole thing again and see if you got faster at it. And of course you want to compare your quality and make sure that the quality is about the same, but can you draw hands faster uh, or whatever it is, these time-based challenges are really, really effective. Another thing that's super effective is to create a reward system. And this can be rewards or even consequences for completing or not completing your, your goal. So, you know, it's just basically attaching, attaching a reward to whatever goal you have. Some like it could be anything. It could be something that you've always been wanting to do. Say if there's this restaurant you really want to been going out to have a nice dinner or something and just say, "Hey, if I do this, then I'm going to I'm going to treat myself to this restaurant." It could be, you know, part of the reason why we're talking about this is is a lot of people are are, you know, not finding time to do their artwork because of video games. So why not take the things that are kind of sucking our time away and make those the rewards? So, you know, if you complete, you Know, whatever your goal is then you can say okay I'm gonna do this amount of artwork or they create this these these things and if I do that then I'm gonna allow myself 30 minutes to an hour to, to play a game or to watch a TV show or whatever it is um, another thing that game companies do a lot is the, sort of this element of surprise and you'll see these with like these loot crates or these treasure chests that you earn like in the games and you can kind of create that for yourself so one thing you could do is like just you can go and just buy some gift cards and they don't have to be expensive ones. you can get like cheaper gift cards to like Starbucks where you can put your own amount on it or like you know whatever is Cold Stone Creamery McDonald's you know whatever these different gift cards and you can put them in a box and then uh, you know after you complete your task you just kind of reach in there and most of those cards are about the same size they'll, they'll probably feel the same then you can pull it out and not pull it out and you would be like oh cool this is what I got so let's go do this and you can even if you really want to do something crazy you could throw in some things that are just you know kind of lame like it could be an expired gift card or a library card so because a lot of times when you open these treasure chests you don't know what you because it's not always something good it could be something bad and if you pull out something that's like oh man this card expired then it's like okay uh, we'll do it again we'll see what I get next time so you could do something like that um, and you know you don't have to go out and spend a lot of money you can do it with you know you can do it with candy bars and you can do like uh, you know get six different candy bars or treats or snacks or something like that whatever it is and just put numbers on them like one through six and then you could roll a roll a die and whatever number is what you get you can do something like that or you can do like a number generator and you could just you know you could you can just go crazy get creative just come up with whatever kind of goals you know or what kind of awards that you want for your different goals uh, the other thing you could do is you could set up like consequences and so there's a couple designers I follow there's uh, um, Diane Gibbs who runs a podcast called the design recharge and Dustin Lee who is uh, the owner of retro supply company 
Um, and so he also does this thing called Passive Income for Designers, which I follow and everything. But he wanted to do this, I guess, this course uh, for the Passive Income for Designers. He just was finding, he wasn't, he, he just wasn't getting done. So uh, Diane kind of put this challenge to him saying, you know, you've got these guitars that you really love. What if you had to either sell one or I don't know if it got as far as like breaking it or whatever. Uh, but this was all you know public so you know if he didn't complete this task then he would have to get rid of something that he really loved and it must have worked because it wasn't too long after that that he actually did put out a course and getting a friend involved brings us to our tip number four which is community and competitors so it wouldn't hurt to get and I'm putting up air quotes but an accountability buddy so if you're familiar with the 24-hour art check that uh, Joshua Kimball and Corey Kerr do sometimes I'm involved with that as well but it's basically every, what is it, three days or so that they check in with each other to make sure that they've completed a certain amount of tasks. Um, that works really well. Another thing that games do a lot are like leaderboards. And, you know, so you've got your this high score and you don't want to lose that. And, you know, you can kind of see where other people, if they're creeping up on you. And that kind of helps you to be a little more productive. But you can do that. We did this in with the Werewolves and Unicorns uh, comic book anthology that we finished. We were we had this sort of leaderboard set up where whoever could send the most clicks to the Kickstarter would get to choose the theme for the next uh, you know the next anthology. So you know it would just rank who had, who sent the most clicks and people. There was a really healthy competition of people trying to get people to use their uh, URL to click through so that they could get the points for that. So that worked really well. The other thing that that's really helpful is to sort of get your significant other involved. And even if they're not an artist, you know, maybe they've got some other task that they want to complete. Maybe they want to get involved with doing yoga and, you know, their goals for yoga, your goals for creating artwork, and you can kind of just check back and forth and, and hold each other accountable and do that. And it's really good to have people in your life sort of on the same page uh, so they can sort of understand the importance of all this stuff. And then they can get on your case if you're not being productive. Uh, but even if you don't have somebody like that, you can uh, do what is our fifth and final tip, which are to set reminders. And game companies, they design these into games all the time. So if you stop playing for a certain amount of time, you get like a little alert that pops up that's like, hey, you haven't played in so long, or hey, here's an extra thing, or, or something like that. And you can kind of set these things up yourself. You can set it up through like little reminders through you know, uh, Google Calendar or whatever sort of task management uh, software or whatever that you use. Just set up these little things so if you do kind of fall off track and you might even forget about it, but you'll get this little alert saying, hey, today's the day where you were supposed to do this. And then maybe that will help you get back into the thing. And then, because uh, those little alerts constantly bugging you, it's kind of sends those endorphins and everything. It's like, oh man, I've got to do this thing. Um, and I kind of forgot about it, but I got to get back on the horse and everything. So, so reminders are a big thing, but you don't have to necessarily create your own system. There are actually apps out there that will help you uh, and complete these tasks and keep on target and everything. Um, and I will put the links to, hopefully I will put the links to some of these in the description, but uh, I'll list just a few of them. There's the Do It Now app, which is sort of an RPG to-do list. There's, uh, let's see, there's one called Epic Win, which is another RPG style to-do list. There's one called Habitica, which is sort of this gamified task manager. But all, all of these are, you know, you kind of enter your goals and you set them up and everything. And, uh, and then they'll help you keep on task and everything. And uh, yeah, I think, I think all of these things are really going to help you achieve your goals in art if you're, if you're having trouble with that. All right, so those are some of my tips on how to gamify our productivity, but I want to actually put this thing into practice. I want people to start doing this. So does this sound like something that may work for you that you think you're gonna try? Um, I think a lot of people are gonna benefit from this. Uh, so let's, let's, let's try some of these things out. And you know, let me know on social media how this stuff is going as you're, uh, you know, as you're moving along with this. And, and is it really changing the way your workflow goes, your productivity, all this stuff? 
stuff, I think it will. But you gotta make that commitment. You gotta start setting this stuff up in order for it to pay off. So let's get to that and uh, I will see you guys later. That is all. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Also, you can follow me at Surfworks on social media. Do you like making comics? Then go to Surfworks.com and pick up the Comic Maker Starter Kit. It's packed full of fonts, brushes, templates, and more. And best of all, it's totally free.